Hey everyone, Jacob Howard here, and in this video we will be going over some of the laws and basic safety guidelines for FPV flying. Now I know it's not the most fun subject to talk about, but it is one that we really all should know in order to keep the FPV hobby as free and unrestricted as possible. We all need to fly responsibly. We will be going over the official FAA guidelines that can be found at www.faa.gov. This is not legal advice and you are responsible for upholding these laws and knowing them to their full restrictions. We are merely giving an overview so that you can better understand them. The first one is register your drone, mark it on the outside with the registration number and carry proof of registration with you. If your drone weighs between 0.55 pounds or 250 grams up to 55 pounds with battery installed, you will need to register it on the FAA dronezone.faa.gov website. Then mark your drone with the registration number. If your drone weighs less than 0.55 pounds, there is no need to register it unless you are flying commercially. Keep a printout or proof of registration with you when you fly. You can print out the number and tape it to your drone, or use a label maker to create a label or simply write it on your drone in permanent ink. Generally, it's good practice to label your drone with your name and phone number in case it's lost, but the FAA number is required. If your drone weighs less than 0.55 pounds, there is no need to register or label it, once again, unless you are flying commercially. The second one is fly only for recreational purposes. What this means is that as a recreational pilot, you can't make money off of flying your drone or sell your drone footage unless you obtain a Part 107 permit. This includes indoor racing with prize money and using it on monetized YouTube sites or using it in portfolio or promotional material to get paying jobs. Number three is fly your drone at or below 400 feet above the ground when in uncontrolled Class G airspace. As tempting as it is to blast off and see how high your drone can go, it's not a good idea. Class G airspace is typically the airspace close to the ground around 1,200 feet or less. But with your drone, you're limited to 400 feet. What this rule doesn't say is that you're really limited to 400 feet from any point of the ground or man-made object. So if there is a mountain or man-made object that is 1,000 feet tall, you are limited to 1,400 feet. You just have to stay within 400 feet of the object at all times. This means you can't start far off, fly up to 1400 feet, then approach the object. You would need to approach it within 400 feet, then you could climb up to 400 feet above or around the object. Number four is obtain authorization before of flying in controlled airspace, class B, C, D, and E. You can obtain authorization in three ways, the LAANC, the FAA's drone zone, or a written agreement with the FAA for fixed flying sites. Number five is flying drones in certain airspace is not allowed. These two rules are closely related. A general rule would be do not fly within five miles of an airport without authorization. However, there are also areas where flying is not allowed at all, such as national parks, around certain government buildings, military installations, and critical infrastructures. Conventional maps that show the different classes of airspace can be very confusing and hard to read. So the best way to know where you can and can't fly would be to download an app that is kept up to date with all the restricted locations. Some of these apps are Kitty Hawk, Air Map, and Before You Fly. We recommend Kitty Hawk or Air Map because they are updated on a regular basis and fairly easy to use. Number six is keep your drone within your visual line of sight or within the visual line of sight of a visual observer who is co-located, physically next to, and in direct communication with you. When flying FPV, you are unable to keep visual line of sight to your drone. So you are legally required to have a visual observer that can keep an eye on your drone and can warn you if people or manned aircraft enter the area. Number seven, do not fly at night unless your drone has lighting that allows you to know its location and orientation at all times. This one is pretty self-explanatory. Though some FPV cameras are meant to fly in low light or dark conditions, flying at night is risky even with lights on your drone. But given the right circumstances like in a well-lit parking lot or park, it could be done safely. Just be aware the risk of crashing goes up dramatically after dark. Number eight, give way to and do not interfere with manned aircraft. This one is very important. If a manned aircraft is in the area, do not fly until it's gone. If a manned aircraft enters the area while you're flying, it's best to just land until they leave. It's just good common sense to not risk life when flying a drone. Number nine is never fly over any person or moving vehicle. This is another good common sense rule. If something were to go wrong with your drone, even though it's fairly lightweight, it can still cause serious injuries to people or cause property damage or even cause an accident with vehicles. Number 10, never interfere with emergency response activities such as disaster relief, any type of accident response, law enforcement activities, firefighting, or hurricane recovery efforts. This is a big one. There have been many instances where someone thought it would be a good idea to fly their drone around an active wildfire. This interferes with firefighting efforts and costs precious time and money that could be spent on getting the fire out. If a drone is spotted, it grounds aerial firefighting vehicles for up to an hour or more. We cannot stress this enough. 
do not fly anywhere near wildfires or any areas where there is an emergency. Doing so puts people's lives in danger and creates animosity towards drones and the hobby. Number 11, never fly under the influence of drugs or alcohol. Many over-the-counter medications have side effects that could impact your ability to safely operate your drone. So just like driving a car, don't do it impaired. It's never worth the risk to your drone, yourself, or others. Number 12, do not operate your drone in a careless or reckless manner. This rule could be interpreted in many different ways, but it really comes down to common sense. You do not want to injure anyone or cause damage with your drone. So if you go flying somewhere, you need to ask yourself, what's the worst that can happen? If it is risky to property yourself or others, don't fly. Find a safe location to enjoy your flying. And to finish it all off, the FAA gives this warning. Recreational flyers should know that if they intentionally violate any of these safety requirements and or operate in a careless or reckless manner, they could be liable for criminal and or civil penalties. It's a bit heavy, but good to remember. Now let's talk a little bit about the Part 107 certification. The Part 107 certification is an FAA issued certification that allows drone use for commercial purposes. It basically follows all the rules that we've already talked about, but has some additional rules and regulations. To obtain the Part 107 certification, you need to be 16 years or older, and you will need to pass an aeronautical knowledge test. To find out more about the Part 107, follow the link posted in the description below. We also have partnered up with Altitude University, one of the leading courses on the Part 107 test. You can find out more about that below as well. So as drone pilots, we all need to try and keep and follow these rules. Doing so will help keep the hobby free for everyone to enjoy and above all, help keep everyone safe. And again, as we mentioned earlier, it is your responsibility to know the laws. Please go to and study the rules at faa.gov website for yourself. If you enjoyed this video on FPV, we actually have an entire online course developed around these same types of lessons. We're talking dozens of lessons and hours of material designed to get you started into FPV or make you a better pilot. It is the world's first online FPV course and we have students from around the world learning through it. The link to learn more is in the comments below. And as always, if you guys have any questions, definitely let me know and have fun flying.